Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. Hold on, I can't hear you. Because Why the not? audio is stupid. And You're stupid. Uh, no, I get why the Oh, okay, I'm the audio is not stupid. I'm stupid. That's what I said. You don't know that because you can't hear me. Now I can hear you. Hello? Well, when you said the audio is stupid, I said you were stupid. And then you proved me right, so. Hello, Jerry. How are you? I'm doing fine. Aside from being an asshole, how are you? Um, I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm, I'm doing nothing all day. Seems like a great idea, but unfortunately, we got to do this. Unfortunately. Well, thank you for pitching in tonight with Tara Ill and Out of Commission. How was your ride back from uh, MAGFest? Um, boring, long, dark. Uh, that's about it. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I miss shaking hands and signing autographs and having people worship me. I think th this was the first year people didn't didn't not people didn't know my name, which was kind of nice because last year it was like. <laughs> My name was, can you take my picture with? <laughs> that was apparently my name. Yeah, that was mine, too. <laughs> no one knew me when I, when I showed up at my MAGFest, including everyone at Channel Awesome. I'd be like, hi. And they're like, hi, fan. Did you want my autograph? I'm like, no, I'm, no, I'm Todd. Like, and some people are like, oh. But oh. most people are like, whatever. But they're all sorry now, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I have so much power. <laughs> power. Um. So yeah, we have a uh, tonight's got a wonderful selection of naked. I must say, Qu quite quite a bit of it. In fact, I I wow. Is it good naked? Is it ever good naked on this show? I'm an optimist. It's no, it's not. It's never good naked on this show. Well, that seems to be a problem with the show. Why don't you get some good naked? So anyway, it's time for uh, the nonsense, so let's begin it. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here, a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And let's see, where do we begin tonight? Let's... Let's just go for the full out in Santa. We saw a lot of a lot of people with with costumes and weaponry and such at, at Magfest, but you know that that had a context. It was a convention. Mm. This person, not so much with the context. San Jose police had to have a standoff. A man with an assault rifle in his clothes. He removed his he re which in his in his car. He removed his clothes. And brandished a samurai sword at police officers, um, ending up in a standout for more than two hours. And already I have questions. For example, if you have an assault rifle, why are you resorting to the samurai sword? Lesser sentence. <laughs> and also <laughs> why were the clothes a hindrance oh then that shit gets caught on your sword duh I yeah of but course, other things could, things it, could be get caught on your sword that, too yeah. that's right if you're a male other things more important things than, than your culottes are getting <laughs> caught on your sword Coco Bennett oh my god <laughs> Coco <laughs> Bennett I think that explains everything wrong with this guy. Coco Bennett, 29, of unknown residence, is arrested on suspicion of brandishing a weapon in possession of an assault rifle. Police were covered an AR-15 assault rifle, a magazine and live uh, ammunition from Bennett's car. Um, when police uh, reached his home, the suspect was not there. That they, they were told he had an assault rifle. Uh, they followed his pickup. Uh, suspect drove him to the station's parking lot, began to take up off his clothing and emerged from the truck naked while brandishing an unsheathed samurai sword. He said, quote, to the officers, he said, quote, you're going to have to kill me. 
<laughs> That's pretty true. San Jose, California. I'm pretty sure they, their response was, okay. <laughs> John Belushi lives. They, uh, they were to stand off with him for two hours of negotiation, which I'm pretty sure the negotiation, the negotiation might have included pants, maybe. <laughs> two hours, can you believe that? Two hours naked, brandishing a sword in a standoff with the, with the cops. <laughs> Move like an animal to feel the kill. <laughs> Why are you naked? <laughs> Why are you? I am, actually. And things just got 20% creepier. 10%, come on. I'm already wearing a mask, God. And eventually, after his standoff with the samurai sword, he ran away. And they had to chase him down. Which, you know, guy... <laughs> the glamorous life of a cop. Chasing down naked men with swords. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what they were expecting when they went to the police academy, did they? I'm going to serve my community. I'm, I'm going to stop drugs and help people and prevent crime. And why is there a naked man pointing a sword at me? <laughs> I hate my life. My life is bad. Oh, but we have even more. Just the, the naked keeps on coming. This is from Canada. And, um, you know, that stereotype that everything in Canada Involves hockey. Does it involve naked? It involves both. Oh, good. Drunk Alberta woman strips on the ice during a hockey game. Uh, at a scene reminiscent of the classic film Slapshot, Mounties blew the whistle on an impromptu strip tease during a men's hockey game. Um, the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police received a complaint from a motorist whose vehicle was damaged after he drove off a highway. Mounty said the offending passenger driver and passenger fled the scene, located the car a short time later. This is taking a while. The passenger, uh, who was also intoxicated, had been dropped off at the arena, and then proceeded to make her way onto the ice and remove her clothing despite the employee's objections. <laughs> and all I'm thinking of right now is, is uh, is uh, Willy Wonka. No, stop. Come back. <laughs> well, I'm just looking at this this thing, the, the, the story you sent me. There's a giant picture of what I assume is not footage from the from the actual crime. It's just a picture of a hockey net with a bunch of pucks in it. Yeah. And I'm trying to and I'm trying to figure out the metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> stop. I, I mean, I. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> okay, so he was almost in a head-on collision, drove off the highway, but also they they returned. They, they dropped off the the drunk person for a hockey game because that's what you do, mm. and then naked at the hockey. All I can think here is the worst place in the world. There are many bad places. To become naked in public. But I would think the ice <laughs> would be probably one of the least wise places to become naked for obvious yeah, reasons. Yeah, that's up there with like nuclear power plants <laughs> with places you should not take off your clothes. I would actually think the nuclear power plant would be less would be a little more comfortable even if only in the short term. <laughs> because you know, it's Jesus Christ. Well, if you wanted some high definition there for the people watching in the in the rink, that would do it because everything on you is probably just you got nipples that could cut glass at that point. Yeah, the Selena the cynic in the channel says, "Wow, that's perky from hell." <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I've drank a great many things in my lifetime. I can't imagine what this person had to drink in order to consider this the best idea for the evening. You want to know? What? And I can tell you, okay, it's one shot tequila, 
then two shots of rum, one more shot of tequila, then a uh, bottle of shell vodka from, in the plastic bottles, you know, the um, Burnett's. Uh, that's what I drank. Some of my friends drank Aristocrat. Then uh, just a good six pack of cheap natty light beer will that'll 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 do it for you. Uh, like I said, it takes a lot. It's not easy. Oddly precise. You asked. Okay. Uh <laughs> In this, yeah, people in channel, JCat, in this exact order, take notes. Um, <laughs> next one is, of course, Florida, because this is my show and it is Florida. This guy, know, Florida. you know what? It's, it's, this guy pretty much is, when it comes to naked crazy, this guy pretty much embodies the spirit of go hard or go home. Okay, not like that, but, no, but, uh, are you a bad man, Nash? I don't know. From Florida, man punched female driver, got naked, laid down in road. And look, I got to put him on the big screen because just look at him. There's He's naked in that shot, isn't he? He is, and there is nothing going on. <laughs> Also, he's got the unibrow going. He's kind of looking like an, he's kind of like a Neanderthal look going on with him. He kind of looks like that cover of you know that Orleans album cover. You know, you still the one. It's got that photo of all of them naked. You don't know that one? I don't know that one. Well, I'll find it and send it to you. <laughs> Denny yeah. Noah is accused of reaching into a car, stopped at a traffic light on Stock Island and then punching the woman driver in her eye before fleeing the scene on New Year's Eve. Uh, responding to deputy gathered information from the driver, he heard a report on his radio about a man lying nearby roadway close to the Key uh, Haven boat ramp. Oh, God, let's look at this album cover and see if you are correct, sir. Yeah, that's that's creepy. That's oddly, yeah, kind of on the nose there. You're still the one I want you back. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, let's see. You stop. Don't play. Stupid autoplay. Um, <laughs> now the deputy responded, reported seeing a naked man on the ground and two other men struggling with him, trying to put him into the trunk of a car. Naked man turned out to be Denny Noah, 24. The other two dudes were his brother. Uh, but his brothers, Noah's shorts were found nearby. Deputies helped him put them on. Again, one of those high points of a law enforcement career. You're struggling. You know, you know, if you only watch cops, you'll have a certain idea of what cops do. And if you only watch this show, you'll have a different idea of what <laughs> cops do. Uh. I can only imagine being a police officer just chasing down naked people all the time. This was, I think, like he, you, instead of like a gun or a nightstick, you just issue people like blankets and pants. <laughs> You'll need these. <laughs> what, I won't need a stun gun or no, just these. <laughs> Trust me. This is 90% of your job. The other 90% is trying not to kill yourself when you realize this is 90% of your <laughs> job. New Year's Eve, he was doing this shit. Well, that's a, that's a good way to ring in the new year. Again, of those places to be naked, laying down in the middle of the road, naked. You know that, you know, the, the Beatles song, you know, why don't we do it in the road? I always had a good answer for that, because that's where cars are. <laughs> Well, you don't get naked in the road. I just... Yeah, what were you thinking was going to happen? Your dick is not a speed bump. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Ow. This is a little tiny one at that point, you know? <laughs> I don't think they're going to notice it. All right, let's get to the more clothed insanity. Um... When you were a kid, did you did you ever have another kid do something to you and your parents got into a fight over it? 
you know, I didn't really interact with other children through childhood or adulthood, but go on. As when I was a kid, if, you know, kids would come and, you know, they would like steal my toys or something and my moms and their moms would get into issues over it. I, I never once recalled those uh, disputes involving the setting of fire. Neighbor accused of setting fire outside Algiers apartment over cell phone dispute. This one comes from New Orleans. Spat between two neighboring families over cell, spo- cell phones spurred one of the neighbors to set a fire outside the other's apartment. Um, police book Kim Hem- Henry in the uh, Orleans Parish Jail on four counts of aggravated arson. According to the report, Henry, 33, was feuding with her neighbor because she accused the neighbor's son of taking her daughter's cell phone. A neighbor told police that Henry banged on the door and yelled, bitch, come outside, which, you know, if, if I ever want, go, want to talk, have someone come out and talk with me, the first thing I'm going to say is, bitch, come outside. I mean, that's just common sense. Hmm. This is a, a might disproportionate, yes. Yeah. The neighbor, seeing it was Henry through the peephole, ignored her and went back to watching a football game. Moments later, the neighbor said his living room filled with smoke, which was coming from beneath his front door. Man rushed the door and opened it, filling his apartment with smoke. Uh, He saw a pair of his son's sneakers ablaze next to his door. He set the kid's sneakers on. She set the kid's sneakers on fire. Her own her her own kid's sneakers. No, the other kid's sneakers. Well, this is just teaching your child conflict resolution. See, if you are wrong, burn their shoes and their house. See, honey, if they take your stuff, you go fuck them up. They shoot. They put one of your guys in the hospital. You put two of their guys <laughs> in the morgue. Yeah, see, this is just wrong. I, I subscribe to Gandhi's thing on this. Like, an eye for an eye just... Sets people's shoes on fire. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. Like, I, I don't All the things you could do out of anger. Out of curiosity, was this uh, Lisa Left Eye Lopez who did this? No, it was not. Wow. Well, it was just a thought. Why set the shoes on fire? The shoes didn't do anything to you. And why not put the shoes in a safe place like a trash can when you put when you set it on fire? <laughs> you know, let's That's do just let's, safe. Let's do your do your response, your arson, but do it. Do your arson responsibly is what we're saying. Exactly. Um, oh, dear. We've uh, let's see. Where's the next one? This one is yet another of Facebook is I think Facebook is single handedly becoming the greatest resource of law enforcement that they ever had before. Because it used to be if you did something wrong, investigators would have to track you down, figure out who you were, come up with evidence. Facebook, on the other hand, makes it so much easier because you do something wrong And they just have to Google it. Police arrested an Oregon teenager who confessed on Facebook that he had been driving drunk on New Year's Eve and hit someone's car. Story police officers were investigating a hit and run involving a sideswipe car when two Facebook friends of Jacob Cox Brown contacted authorities reporting a Facebook post in which the 18 year old wrote driving drunk classic winking smiley face. But who else via... What? Oh, classic. Oh, that just some good times driving drunk. Awesome, right? Am I right? Am I right? But to whoever's vehicle I hit, I am sorry. Tongue out, tongue extended, smiley face. What? So, and this is the thing about emoticons that people don't understand. When when you're doing, when, when you, you know, the winky smiley faces. And then the the tongue stuck out smiley faces. You would never do these gestures in a conversation. If you do, you would just look like even more of an asshole than you already are. 
here's what what I'm getting out of this. Either uh, A, don't drive drunk, or B, keep your Facebook friends among your only trustworthy friends. Well, this person was clearly much, much too careless with who he friended. 650 Facebook friends. See? See, there you go. You gotta keep that shit tight. And the last line of the story is genius. Cox Brown did not immediately respond to a Facebook message seeking comment. (laughs) Stop putting that shit on Facebook. They will catch you. You know, I was about to like try and come up with like some clever analogies. Like this is like if you left a note telling the police that you did it. But he but that's did. That's literally what it is. He left a note. Uh, our last one tonight comes from Denver, and it's it's one of those baffling things. I could kind of would, have you ever, in real life. You have thoughts that you would never act on. Just things pop into your mind, like you see like one of those defibrillators at the airport and go, wow, that'd be fun to play with, but you don't do it because you would get in trouble and there are consequences. This guy, his idea of consequences took the day off. Man steals ambulance, goes for a joyride. It's from uh, Denver, Colorado. Law Mount Paradetic crew needed rescuing itself early Sunday morning when its ambulance was stolen while the paramedics were helping an elderly woman. And let's get this guy on the screen because this does not look like the guy who would steal an ambulance. Really? Yeah. It looks a bit between like John Voight and the guy from Breaking Bad. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Um, Route 3 AM fire medical crews responded to a call. From an 86-year-old woman who had fallen when the crews were in residence, paramedics from American Medical Response heard their ambulance beeping, indicating it was backing up. They ran out and saw their ambulance driving off. Police pursued the ambulance six blocks before the driver pulled over. And I can only imagine at the moment where the police came to him and he's driving, is there a problem, officer? (laughs) What? Why? But, like, seriously, that's a, among the dicker things to do. I mean, I assume they needed this ambulance to do ambulancy type things, right? Well, they weren't using it at the time. <laughs> he was going to bring it back. God, they didn't get so upset have, about it. He could at least do, you know, do them a favor and wait to steal it after they got the, uh, the, the old lady in the thing and then take her to the hospital. Well, if you want a I reason. Mean, um, this is Robert Elmar Taylor, 51 years old, otherwise known as old enough to fucking know better. His reasoning, he was very fucking drunk, and he said he made some statement about being cold. Was he homeless? No, no, just drunk and cold. Just well, um, amb- are ambulances warm? I mean, they're kind of like, you know, big and drafty. I don't feel like that's a good thing to steal. Oh, just cherry on top here. In addition, Taylor had a warrant for his arrest for escape from the Department of Corrections and was listed as a missing person out of Fort Collins. So you're uh, already- So he's a fugitive. Yeah, you're already wanted oh, by the police. Well, I can see he was a. Ma- I can see how he escaped authorities for so long. He's clearly a master of stealth. <laughs> like I said, he's a slippery one. That Robert Taylor. I'll get away in an ambulance. They'll never be able to track me down. Why don't I just like flash the sirens and drive into a tree too, just for maximum inconspicuity? <laughs> oh my God! Jesus Christ! And I've, heard, I've heard better escape plans. I'll say it. I've heard better ones. <laughs> Driving drunk in an ambulance. And see, that's one of those things. People do this shit all the time. 
in the age of Google, you type, you go in for a job or, or just, you know, a checkup on, uh, on, you know, your back background or whatnot. And still the first thing they will do is Google your ass. And when they do the first thing that's going to come up, drunk guy stealing an ambulance. <laughs> That's because shit's going to follow you until you die. You could cure, you know, cancer. And they're all going to be like, hey, weren't you the guy who got drunk and stole the ambulance? Well, no, that's not true. Jonas Salk stole many ambulances and no one knows about that. I may have made that up. I'm waiting for the people in the, in the, in the, in the ch channel to start going, who the fuck is Jonas Salk? One of the Jonas Brothers? <laughs> No, no, he's not. He's not, sweetie. Oh, boy. Okay, so um, what have we learned this week? Police um, have terrible jobs. Police have the worst fucking jobs. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have problems with cops from time to time, but I'm kind of understanding where they're coming from with the shit they got to contend with. I mean, half of their job is, sir... Sir, would you please put on your pants, sir? Like, I, you know, I, we're making the assumption that naked people attract cops. We're making cops attract naked people. Have we ever thought of that? Actually, naked you know, if, if cops attracted naked people, I think more people would want to be cops. <laughs> that's true. You know? No, 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 that's not true. Most people I don't want to see naked. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's uh, isn't it always the way? Isn't it always when when this shit happens? It's always the person you never want to see naked, who is naked. It's it's not like you you would go, oh, that's a person I would want. No, it's never that person. It's always the person who you want to claw your eyes out upon seeing all of yeah, like grandma. Oh. Yeah, it's like you don't want to see your grandma naked, but grandma, um. We've learned that of the many places to get naked, ice is one of the worst. No, actually, I'm going to go with the third one on that one. I think road is much worse than ice. Road is worse than However, we did learn what what happened to uh, to the members of Orleans <laughs> in their later years. That was mm -hmm. some interesting stuff I was not aware of. We, we did learn what happened to them. Um, Actually, one of the one of one of Orleans became a congressman, and one of them is lying down naked in the road. Actually, it's the same guy. But anyway, next thing <laughs> we've learned that Facebook is not. If you put it on Facebook, the entire internet can see it. It's not magically. Oh, no, I didn't mean for you to see it. Oh, my bad. I didn't mean to read it. No, that's not how it works. It goes on to Facebook. Everybody fucking see it. What the fuck is wrong with you? We learned that driving drunk is classic. Classic, yes. Classic. No, no, not just classic. It's classic winking smiley face. So it's classic. Jail is also classic. Jail, yeah. Jail is forever. Mm. Jail never goes out of style. Everybody's going to jail these days. It's, you know. God damn. They really are. And we've learned that no one, th there is nothing that someone won't steal. What was he going to do with it if he got away? I don't know. Where the fuck was he going to do? Well, now I've got my own independent medical practice underway. I mean, there's some pretty wacky pranks he could do with an ambulance. Hmm. I don't think <laughs> I don't think wacky was the uh, was the basis. Yeah. OK. OK. Uh, Zolo and L in the channel said pretty much what was going to happen. Make meth in it. Uh, I get I thought that was an RV. I got, got a lot of space in, a, in an ambulance. And who's going to pull it over? My God. Holy shit, this is actually not a bad idea. 
Get Vince Gilliam on the phone. 